The tragic Wiat massacre took place on February 26, 1860, at Tuluat, also known as Indian Island, near Eureka in Humboldt County, California. In a series of coordinated assaults starting around 6 a.m., white settlers brutally killed between 80 to 250 Wiat individuals using axes, knives, and firearms. These attacks were followed by additional violent assaults on other Wiat villages later in the week, as part of the larger tragedy known as the California Genocide. Since the California Gold Rush a decade before the massacre, immigrants had been settling in the area. At that time, the Wiat tribe was known for their peaceful nature. They had never engaged in conflicts with white settlers and were unprepared for an attack. The killings occurred after two years of growing tension, fueled by certain local whites' hostility toward the residents of Indian Island, as well as numerous editorials in local newspapers and the establishment of volunteer militia groups. The hostility arose from disputes between local Indians and settlers over cattle wandering onto Indian lands, leading to retaliatory actions from both sides. On the night of February 26, 1860, a small group of settlers crossed Humboldt Bay. To avoid attracting attention from nearby Eureka residents, many of whom may not have supported the violence, the attackers primarily used hatchets, clubs, and knives. While guns were also employed, only a few Eureka residents reported hearing gunfire that night, and knowledge of the attack was not widespread at the time. News accounts indicate that only adult men were shot, while women and children were targeted with handheld weapons. According to estimates provided by the Wiat tribe, between 80 to 250 Wiat individuals were killed in the massacre. Another estimate suggests around 150 American Indian people lost their lives. Since most of the able-bodied adult men were away gathering supplies for the ongoing preparations of the World Renewal Ceremony, it's believed that the majority of Wiat men who were killed were older individuals. This lack of able-bodied men contributed to the overall vulnerability of the Wiat during the attack. Typically, the World Renewal Ceremony lasted for seven to ten days, and tradition dictated that men departed at night to gather supplies while the elders, women, and children remained behind to sleep. This is why the majority of the victims were children, women, and older men. The local newspaper reported the scene in vivid detail. Blood pooled everywhere, staining the walls of the huts and turning the grass red. Scattered about were the lifeless bodies of individuals of all ages and genders, from elderly men to infants at the breast. Some had their heads split open by axes, while others were beaten beyond recognition with clubs. Some were pierced or mutilated with bowie knives. Some were struck down as they attempted to flee, while others were mercilessly slaughtered, even as they nearly reached the safety of the water. There were only a handful of survivors. Jane Sam managed to stay alive by hiding in a pile of trash. Matilda and Nancy Spear, along with their three children, took refuge on the west side of the island, and later discovered seven other children who had also managed to survive. A young boy named Jerry James was discovered alive, cradled in his deceased mother's arms. Polly Steve sustained serious injuries and was left for dead, but miraculously recovered. Mad River Billy, one of the few Wiat men present during the attack, leaped into the bay and swam to safety in Eureka. Additionally, Kai Kwaish, also known as Josephine Beach, and her 11-month-old son William, escaped harm by not being on the island at the time of the massacre. They were compelled to return home before the attack started because they got lost in the fog while paddling out to participate in the celebrations. The slaughter on Tuluat Indian Island was a part of a simultaneous, well-planned operation that also targeted a camp on the Eel River and other neighboring Wiat places. On the same day, reports indicated that the same group had killed an additional 58 people at South Beach located about a mile south of Eureka, despite the fact that many of the women there worked for white families and were fluent in English. Forty more Wiat were slain on the south fork of the Eel River on February 28, 1860, and then another 35 at Eagle Prairie a few days later. 
Although newspapers outside Humboldt County widely condemned the attack, no one was ever prosecuted for the murders. Bret Hart penned an editorial in the Northern Californian, based in what is now Arcata, California, condemning the massacre. However, due to threats against his life by sympathizers of the genocide, Hart soon found it necessary to leave the area. In his editorial, Hart described the scene as, a more shocking and revolting spectacle was never exhibited to the eyes of a Christian and civilized people. He vividly depicted the brutal violence, including elderly women lying in pools of blood with their gray hair matted, and infants with hatchet wounds on their faces. Additionally, several prominent local citizens expressed their outrage in letters to San Francisco newspapers, condemning the attacks and identifying suspected conspirators. In a newspaper editorial published in the San Francisco Bulletin a few days after the massacre, local Sheriff Barrett Van Ness stated that the motive behind the attack was revenge for cattle theft. In the last year, ranchers in the inland valleys reported that as much as one-eighth of their cattle had been stolen or killed by Indians. In May 1859, rancher James C. Ellison was killed while pursuing suspected rustlers. It's important to note that the area where these ranches were situated was inhabited by the non gadol tribe, not the Wiat, meaning the massacre victims were not responsible for any cattle theft. Van Ness concluded his statement by emphasizing that he did not excuse the perpetrators for their actions. Overseeing Fort Humboldt at the time, Major Gabriel J. Rains reported to his superior commander that a local vigilante gang had decided to exterminate every peaceful Indian men, women, and children. The Humboldt Volunteers, 2nd Brigade, were a vigilante group that was founded in Hydesville, a ranching hamlet in the non gadol region, in early February 1860. Throughout February, they were actively engaged in attacking Indians along the Eel River. Concerned citizens had petitioned California Governor John G. Downey to officially enlist the Humboldt Volunteers and provide them with regular pay. However, Governor Downey rejected the petition, citing the forthcoming arrival of an additional company of regulars from the U.S. Army to Fort Humboldt. A review of subsequent communications to Governor Downey uncovered the true motive behind the series of massacres, including the one at Indian Island. In order to qualify for state support, the volunteer company under the direction of Seaman Wright sought official authorization as a state militia. E.L. Davis a rancher from Hydesville, who chaired the meeting where the company was formed, wrote to Downey shortly after the massacre, expressing that, This company is necessary for the protection of lives and property. If we don't receive it, we'll never request assistance from the state again. Personally, I'll oppose paying any more state taxes, and we'll handle our own issues in our own way, by wiping out the Indians from our county. The incident at Indian Island is just the beginning if we don't receive the protection from the state or federal government that citizens deserve. The Wiat tribe stated that their people were prohibited from returning to the island or their other lands. A large number of the Wiat who were still alive were moved to the Klamath River Reservation after being placed under protective custody by soldiers from Fort Humboldt. However, they did not leave their former homes without resistance. Upon arriving at the fort, many Wiots returned to their homes, and attacks on white settlements intensified, particularly in areas with few white settlers. In recent years, the Wiot have been repurchasing the land to conduct their annual world renewal ceremony. White settler Robert Gunther gained ownership of the island in 1860, the same year as the massacre. Gunther diked the island and converted it into a dairy ranch. Subsequently, it served as a shipyard repair facility, resulting in contamination from toxic chemicals. However, the Wiot tribe regained legal ownership of the island, undertook remediation efforts, and continued to oversee its management.